Right then, some more van life. We uh, recently did a video on the T5, T5 facelift by turbo engine, saying how rubbish they are. So watch that if you want to see, but one of the common things in the comments section and emails that we got subsequently, we're talking about the new bi-turbo engine in the T6 and the T6.1. So, so I took the, this opportunity, we've tuned quite a lot of T6s, but we've only tuned a few of these T6.1s and we've always been in a bit of a rush and never got around to videoing them and stuff. But these some certain ones that have been a bit of a pain in the bum to read as well. So we finally got all that sorted, finally got a chance to video one that we've got time to video anyway. So this is Andy's facelift. I think it's done two and a half, three thousand miles, something like that. This is the third car that we've tuned for him and he's still got them all as well, so he must like us. I don't know whether that's right or wrong. But basically, this is the newest iteration of the bi-turbo engines. Now, a lot of people are asking us if these are reliable, if these are any good, do these still have the same problems? I think the jury's still out they've got potential to have a lot of problems because they're even more complicated than the other ones. But the one good thing is, as we're about to see, they actually make better power than the earlier ones, or nearer to book power most of the time, but they also tune up pretty well. So this one is totally standard. We've not deleted anything. We've not done anything weird. We literally just mapped it. It's a DSG model, which sometimes saps a little bit of horsepower when you're dynoing it, but the drive nice as well, so they're probably worth having. So seven speed DQ500, so you've not really got any torque limitation issues. They're not really got any common problems. So they can take all the power, we, we can throw at them really. So yeah, we'll have a quick look at what they're doing. And yeah, Daniel put up all the different engine codes and what horsepower they are, but this is it. I'm going to rip down here. This is the 199 horsepower, and that's a CXEC. So the earlier ones, the 204s, they're the CXEB, which sort of goes back because it's newer, but it's, it's uh, less horsepower, which I'm assuming that's an emissions thing, but as we'll be able to see, it doesn't really work like that. So anyway, there's tons of other engines. We'll put all them up there. You can see what they all are and what they're doing. So. This should be 199, and that's what it's done. Exactly 199. It doesn't rev really quite high as standard, but that's the gearbox changing up. This little dip here at four and a half grand, that's it just changing up a gear at the end of the run. And I would like to start it at lower RPM than that, but you start it any lower and it wants to kick down a gear anyway. So 350 foot pound, 199 horsepower. These are nice fans as standard. They drive really well. They're not slow by any stretch. They run fairly cool, which is not the same that can be said as like, if you watch the S4 video that we had on, we'll put a link to that as well. They, uh, they're pushed really, really hard as standard. And obviously that's not ideal. That's not ideal either. Just turn that off. You can see the inner sanctum of the dyno controllers. Some people are like this. Just turn that off. So, they're not bad. So we'll look at the, uh, the tuned horsepower. It's not pushed ridiculous. So as you can see, this is what we managed to squeeze out of it. So we've just done a really long pull after this as well. And the EGTs are getting a little bit hotter than we want them to get, but still not nowhere near as hot as the standard S4 we're getting. But I think we're probably pushing it a little bit too far to say we're keeping the emissions equipment. Because if you start putting too much uh, fuel in there, you're going to get soot mass, you're going to start blocking DPF, which between runs, this is not getting blocked, but you can see an increase in the soot level, which it's not going to regen. It's not really doing any passive regen either. So it, it's to be expected. And I hope Mike's not trying to use my computer remotely. Stop sharing. So 425 horsepower, 258, 425 foot pound. 258 horsepower, this will be a rocket on the road. But we need to uh, see what the EGTs are like when we've got it back out and see. So I think, I'll just look at, I were happier when I were looking at the logs at this sort of power. So if we're sort of selling this to customers, I think we're gonna probably be saying 
the mid 240s are where you want to be if you do near to standard power so that's a more realistic estimate so 240s or thereabouts if we get 258 and it's nice and cool on the road i think that should be fine if you're removing dpf because you're in a country where you can get rid of that and not cause you any problems i can't see any reason because it's not getting too hot but it might just be getting that little bit too sooty for uh, the dpf so i'll just hide that 246 one just for now so what i can compare it to is the older what i'm going to compare it to now is the older 204 horsepower engine so this is not an old bag of scrap that i'm comparing it to either this is pete's probably i think he's only about 5,000 mile and is and this was totally standard it came to us with a tune on which we'll look at in a second but then all we did was flash it back to standard and that's what it did so 325 foot pound of torque it's a little bit wavy because that one didn't like the dyno as much as this one even though the same gearbox and everything and not much too different so 325 330 foot pound of torque but only 175 horsepower so again like we've had with the um, earlier by tdis which they're 180 and they always do 160 on our dyno absolutely crap but this one could have been worse could have been better we've had a couple uh the 204s in after this and a couple before it and they've done mid 180s couples touch 190s but don't know why there weren't any weird winter tires on or all that nothing really made any sense but it is what it is and that's why we always say a dyno figure is just something to talk about and it's subject used subjectively so then this one just as a quick reference this was a tune that pete's had on this blue one 209 this was supposedly a 250 horsepower tune that somebody put on there for him and if you look the torque were absolutely crap it gained nothing where you're going to use it so the three and a half to probably knock it on to four thousand rpms probably as much as you'd ever rev these unless you're really going for it and it had not got much more sort of up to 3200 anyway so it was rubbish the tune were absolutely crap so i'll just hide that one hide that and then that purple one there for 375 230 horsepower is what we gained after we'd after we tuned it so quite a decent difference the torque obviously 50 foot pound more torque or oh, pounds feet i keep getting it wrong the uh and the horsepower obviously that's another 55 horsepower so it was definitely noticeable in that car and pete were happy with that until we told him we've got an hybrid turbo and that's another story we've tested that still not happy we'll uh we'll try and get more out of that later on and that might be a product product that we sell but we wanted to test one of these first because we knew these had got a different turbo on and they were probably capable a little bit more anyway but there's quite a lot of distinct differences in these to be fair i've not gone too far into these to look at what's different but we will have a deep a, a deeper dig after doing this now and figure out what is different so i think i've probably waffled on enough if we can try and get a little bit of something on the road or or get the customer to oh no that beep we're gonna have to wrap this up all be ages we'll cut to the road logs the road uh, videos anyway